right, uh, our next question, uh, you know, our scripture theme for this year's Glorious has been Psalms 145.5 in the New Living Translation. How many people were here last night? Let me see your hands. Wonderful. So, you know, we really re-emphasize that. It's so important. And the translation of uh, NLT says, I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. And, you know, I love to read about God's wonderful miracles in scripture, but I also love to hear testimonies about uh, what God is doing today. Now, Amy, your mom brought it up just a little bit last night, but I had planned to discuss this also today, but I'd like to hear it from you. Uh, you were healed of a 13-pound tumor overnight. She had a beautiful book about that. I hope it's at the product table. Anyway, uh, the question is, and, and uh, you can start off, what would you tell someone who's believing for a miracle today? Well, when I was going through nine years of pain and sickness in my body and trying to get a diagnosis without any, uh, you know, luck with the doctors and just went to God and said, God, show me what I need because I know it's not on your end. Show me what I need to, to uh, change in my heart so that I can receive healing because I know it's your will. Got to establish that first. What's God's will? Jesus demonstrated God's will. Second of all, um, how do I get my heart in the place of agreement with heaven? And the Lord showed me, you know, you have to pull out the weeds. So I had some emotional things I got to get rid of, some forgiveness, um, some self-hatred issues that I really feel like was the beginning of the illness that really opened the door for it. Um, so self-hatred and unworthiness was a huge battle that I had to face. So emotionally, I had to get that stuff fixed. And that took some time over a year of just seeking God and asking him to show me his love, um, to reveal things that needed to be pulled out of my heart, to weed the garden, right? <laughs> and I know you talk about that a lot. And then after that, planting the word in that good soil now, so that now the soil is prepared of my heart, I'm ready to receive starting to plant the word. And so I just shut off every other voice and I turn, you know, turned off the radio and the TV and every voice of fear. I stopped going to the doctor because they couldn't really give me any answers. And I said, I'm just gonna just buckle down and listen to the word 24 seven. I'm gonna start speaking God's word morning, noon and night. And so I had my 30 healing scriptures that are in my book and I started to speak those over my body every single day, every time I felt pain, every time I saw myself in the mirror and uh, didn't look, you know, like myself. And I was like, I'm ready to get me back. I need, I need to get me back. And so um, through that, the course of that, God showed me faith sees the after picture when I'm still living in the before. And so faith painted that picture of what I would feel like, what I would look like, what I would be like when I was healed. And when I saw that picture clearly, that's when I knew I could receive prayer and, and truly grab hold of it. And so my faith saw that picture and that's when I received prayer and I just started, you know, believing uh, that it was done. It was finished. It was complete on the cross 2,000 years ago and I already have the victory. I'm just simply enforcing the victory that was already paid for on the cross. And so um, God also showed me that Jesus can only do for you what you believe he can do for you. And he was limited by people's faith, what, what they believed that he could do for them. And so I had to fall in love with the healer. I had to learn who he was. I had to build my relationship with Jesus and realize that his desire more than anything, like we were talking about blessing our kids, God wants to bless his kids so, so much and he wants to heal us so much, uh, but we have to receive it, right? We have to know that that's who he is. And I then had to know that healed is who I am. It's part of my identity in Christ. Healed is who I am. It's not just what I'm trying to obtain or receive, but it is part of my identity, just like prosperous is who I am, joyful is who I am, at peace is who I am, uh, in authority, in victory is who I am. It's part of my identity. And so I started saying, healed is who I am. That's who I am. That's my identity in Christ. It's who I am. And two weeks later, after we received prayer at the altar, when my husband and I were standing in faith, uh, I woke up one morning, I went to bed in pain, looking the same way that I did when I received prayer, but I just thank God, I'm healed. Healed is who I am. I thank you, Jesus, that by your stripes I was healed. The same power that brought Jesus out of the grave is now quickening my mortal body, restoring it to its original state. And you know, I just have all these confessions that I was speaking. And I woke up the next morning and I literally had a brand new body. My spine that was straight was curved. That tumor was gone. My organs were all back in place. I've never had another infection in my body since then. I've never had any more pain. It's completely gone. So God is the healer. 
If you need a miracle, miracles are just natural occurrences in the kingdom of God, right? They're natural things to God. So it's just a miracle in our mindset here on earth because it defies natural norms. And the doctor looked at me after I went back to her and she said, well, I said, Jesus healed me. And she wasn't a Christian, but she said, well, whoever did this for you did you a great favor. And that's all she could kind of say. So God is good. Amen. That's good. I love that. Do you love that? So what I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So what I got from that too that kind of stood out for me that I don't hear often said is the power of visualization, Mm -hmm. of of seeing the end while you're in the middle of the yuck. Yeah. Yeah, and living out, oh, that's my end. And can you go more in that? Right. So when you're in the messy middle, it's 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 difficult sometimes to focus on the victory that you're you're gonna receive. But faith is the evidence. It's all the evidence we need in the court of heaven to receive what is promised us in the word. And so, so we have to have faith um, as the, the thing we hold on to. It's the picture. It is the picture that heaven has for us. And once, my dad always says this, once our picture inside of us matches the picture that heaven has for us, that's when it can happen. It took me 30 days of intense focus on the word, meditation like you were talking about yeah, last night, so meditating on the word of healing for me and my body and listening to things like healing school and um, some series that my dad taught on healing to renew that picture on the inside of me because you have to see it to receive it. If I can't picture myself with a million dollars, I'm never going to have a million dollars. If I can't picture myself healed, I'm never going to be healed. So that that picture, like you're saying, the visualization, but it was the faith that grabbed hold of that picture. And the the woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I can just touch his his garment, I will be healed. She, She visualized what it would be like. That's why she got out of her bed and she chased after Jesus, the healer. And so I just chased after Jesus for those for that year, but really it was that last 30 days, I just chased after Jesus and God show me who you are and I just, I see that you give me the picture of healing I need on the inside of me to receive it. I just love the part of your book where you talked about you don't normally do this, but the night, that night before your healing, you got on the scale. How supernatural is that? Because God had a plan and he prompted you to do that very thing and because of that she knew the exact weight of that thing. The next morning you got on the scale when you saw your new body your healed body, and you were 13 pounds lighter. Yes. Wouldn't we all love that? <laughs> I'm do it again, Lord. Do more visualization. <laughs> I guess it'll work with fat cells too, maybe, huh? <laughs> I think the cool part about that for me, uh, when I hear that and what I think about faith, because I've you know heard a lot, mm-hmm. written a lot, all that kind of stuff, is how powerful it is to feel the emotion of the end result now yes. and how God does that. You know, like I would say, okay, well, I'm going through this thing, but you know what? If I had faith, I would have peace. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be struggling. Oh, God right. help me. That's, That's right. not, can't possibly be faith because faith is trust. That's and great. trust makes yeah. you breathe, right? It just kind of makes you relax in it. And so I always say, like, I want to have what? I want the emotion that I'm going to have mm-hmm. when I get the thing that I want. Mm-hmm. Now, Good. today, as a form of faith, Right, so even if it's miserable, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit helps me to shift that, shift right. my perspective, change it. More than self-help or anything else like that can do because I can't talk myself into what I want. Right. Only the Holy Spirit can do something. It's like a change inside of you, then you grow versus yeah. me just slogging along. No, yeah. I want to feel joy today in that's the good. middle of whatever's happening because I can, right. because and I have God, that's good. Yes. right? Give the Lord because I want it. Guys. Yeah, that reminds that kind of me of what we talked first. about last night about how important it is to rehearse your victory dance, Amen. right? Get ready to rejoice because your your dancing day. You should be dancing now, not then. That's right. But now because that's part of your victory. This is a great one to end with. I hope. Should I switch to another one, girls? What do y'all think? Which question should we do? Okay. Well, okay. Let's just go for it. I don't know how to walk in love without being a doormat, this statement. Question number five, how do I establish boundaries with toxic people and still maintain an open and loving attitude? Read my Shark Proof book. (laughs) Read mom's book, Shark Proof. You gotta have boundaries. As Christians, it's so easy to think that we're supposed to fix everything for everybody, and that's not helping people. You have to learn what they can do and what you can do, and what you're responsible for, and what God expects them to be responsible for. You know, we talk a lot about sowing and reaping, but 
God set up a system of sowing and reaping so people could reap what they had sown so they would change if it wasn't sowing the right thing. As women, so many times we step in and start trying to reap what someone else has sown and take the consequences away from them. We start enabling them and they don't have to change. Meanwhile, we're suffering the pain of what someone else sowed and we wonder, why aren't you there for me, God? What's going on? Why am I in this situation? And so I see it across the board uh, where especially I can see it in women who've raised their children. They're trying to fix things for their adult children. And then they're at the altar losing their house. And God doesn't desire you to do that. Your child will not change if they don't reap some of the consequences of what they're doing. And God set that system up. So don't enable and don't become a victim and don't let them be a victim, but instead be like Jesus, be a helper. Jesus went, he took care of the person. He delivered them from their sin, the demons. And then he said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing happen. Amen. That's great. That's great.